I'm joined by my good friend Tim Taylor, who's um, who's contacted me to talk about DDWRT, which is a um, uh, uh, one of the many alternate firmwares you can put on um, Linux-based Broadcom chipset routers. And uh, there's uh, you know there's there's lots of there's lots of supported devices. If you go to if, if you go to the the DDWRT website, and I'm just sort of scrolling that about on screen at the moment, uh, it shows you the many many hundreds of, of of different supported routers by lots and lots of different manufacturers, uh, and and they're all essentially based on the same uh, Broadcom uh, 4700 series chipset uh, uh, and they run a, a little micro install of Linux um, you know inside that little router and they typically have two or, or, or four or eight uh, megabytes of memory very very modest little configuration very very modest little 200 megahertz processor and uh, and, and but but yeah so it's, um, yeah, it's an endless screen I'm not even half the way down yet scroll 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 mm. many many hundreds of devices um, Often not the device that, that, that your ISP gives you, uh, you know, if you've got cable or if you've got their ADSL service, but um, you know, you can pick them up for almost no money. So I've got, I've got up a, a screen now of a recent search I did on eBay, um, and uh, you know, there's, there's an ASUS one there, 32 quid. There's a Linksys one, 44 quid. Um, I've picked up a couple of tomato, uh, a, a couple of, um, uh, oh, I don't remember what the manufacturer was, um, uh, for like you know, less than 20 quid a piece, and and my two eldest. Um, boys who've just gone away to university recently um, I picked up uh, Linksys uh, WRT 54Gs for them again, you know, look, 15 quid for one of those bad boys mm. and they run DDWRT beautifully um, DDWRT um, uh, gives lots and lots of extra features that you don't get on a normal um, sort of Soho type router um, uh, you know, a lot of things that you more typically find on sort of like a higher end Cisco, you know, thousand pound proper sort of router that you might have in your company's uh, data closet. Um, so things like quality of service um, and uh, you know, proper filtering, pro proper deep packet inspection, um, uh, you know, they're all there. And, and the thing that, that I, I um, uh, you know, kind of have, have done a bit is, is using them to, to net between two wireless segments. So if, mm. if, you're, if your young person's going away to university and they're going to a, a dorm or a hall where they get free high-speed wireless, but you don't know who else is on that wireless segment, and and what, you know, the computer science student down the corridor is doing, you know, hacking away. Ideally, you want to stick another firewall between the free university-provided wireless and the little bit of wireless they have in their bedroom for their laptop and their and their smartphone or whatever. So so DDWRT is excellent at that. You know, it's it's excellent at segregating two wireless segments and putting a firewall in between. So. And they can make their own one-room network for their own Absolutely. devices. Absolutely, and, and, and you, know, uh, you know, browse the web and do all those other things, sort of safe in the knowledge that, uh, that nobody's kind of you know, running a port scanner on their network trying to bust, bust into their Windows or their OS X or whatever they're using. So um, uh, uh, there are alternative um, uh, firmwares that will run on Broadcom chipset routers. The Tomato one is one I used for a while, and it's kind of as good, um, but it's just uh, it doesn't quite have the depth of... of uh, yeah, granularity of being able to tweak with things that that, that you get with um, with DDWRT. I bet it's got great kind of bandwidth monitoring and all those things, which again DDWRT does. But Tomato is an alternative. Runs on all the same sets of routers and it's an open source um, thing. Um, so and there's a, there's a good Wikipedia page on it, which I've just stuck up, um, so you can kind of go and read about it. And uh, and it's a you know it's an open source community project which is constantly being developed. And generally speaking, if you've got a problem with it, somebody else will have solved it in the past. Yeah. You know there'll be there'll yeah. be somebody who who knows how to do that. So Tim, why did mm. you why did you want to start fiddling around with open source firmwares? What did you want to achieve with your home router that um, you weren't getting from the the router provided by your ISP? Well, I'm just getting into the scenario of having um, children approaching teenage years um, with, uh, there's not multiple devices involved, but they've, they've each got, um, my older two have each got um, an iPod touch so they can view screens and, um, you know, we're into the scenario now where um, my eldest daughter will do most things um, with her iPod in one hand. Um, you know, gazing at it and listening with her, her headphones on and stuff like that. So, and uh, she likes uh, Minecraft 
Um, so uh, I know it's very popular with the uh, youngsters and, and not so youngsters. So um, she's always looking for solutions for how to do something in Minecraft or how to do something on a on a video game or something like that. So apparently it's quite useful for homework as well. So, uh, uh, you know, the benefits uh, continue. But, um, yeah, so I wanted to get to the point where I could actually um, just exert a little bit of influence and control over... Uh, um, you know, the sort of thing that happens when, uh, when the bedtimes, um, you say goodnight to them and then you, you kind of find out a bit later that the, uh, their bedtime hasn't happened when you thought it would because they're still on, uh, <laughs> still browsing away or something. So, um, or someone sent a message through, you know, one of their school friends or something like that. So, um, so yeah, I thought it'd be good to, just to, uh, take a little bit of the control back because obviously um wi-fi is a wonderful thing but um but you know as a as an adult you can uh decide how much and how little you want to spend in terms of time on it but um it's nice to have a bit of um influence and, and control over it on behalf of the younger members of the family it, it is true isn't it, it, is true, isn't it? i've, I've still got very loud so coming back you, so you speak so honestly what no no no, 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 no. I speak. nothing's changed uh, at the same uh yeah, and 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 I've I've obviously got got young men, and and obviously um, y you know, young boys want to look at pictures of naked ladies, and uh, again you want to exert some control on that, don't you? Um, so I've Did you I've I've, so I've got up um I, yeah in this in this browser here the 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 um the web interface for, for, for DDWRT, and uh, you know it's the usual kind of thing, bunch of tabs across the top, uh, you know sort of basic setups, and and of course it's, it's password protected. Um, can I remember? Um, I'll tell you one go. thing I've noticed about it through um because I have had I've delved around in it now for a, for um 10 days or so just just plowing away trying to make my solution work and one nice thing just very simple observation but um I'm just looking at your um your page now the the, the headings actually are useful and they mean stuff Com you know and sometimes I've had um probably two or three routers, including one that um, my broadband provider sent me recently for free, which is kind of them, and they, but they did tell me I needed, it was time to upgrade and I could get better speeds or something like that. But um, I tried it out and it's, you know, you do look at some of the menus and you think really, um, you know, they don't make it easy to find what you want to find sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the benefits I think with DDWRT, you know, having played with it just as a, I'm just in the early days of it, but you can find what you want just from looking at, you know, at the tab headings, which is helpful. Yeah, I, I know. I, so my, my, my service provider, TalkTalk, Talk, um, gave me a Huawei um, but the, the yeah, badged, you know, same talk, talk badged Huawei thing, and uh, yeah. I think, and, and the, the same is definitely true of BT's Home Hub. They they, tr mm -hmm. they they try and tread this path of making it very simple for non-technical users, but they totally yeah. obfuscate the kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. you can't get away from the fact that setting up a computer network, even a little small home network, is a tiny bit technical. You know, there's some stuff yeah, going on yeah. there. You know, and, and I know once it, you get a few devices, you know, if you obfuscate things, you, you know, a bit of work. You've, you've got to refer to IP and you've got to refer mm -hmm. to you, you know, kind of. You know, network address translation stuff like that. So, so I don't think they do a huge amount of favours to people, but like you say, no. DDWRT I think it treads a nice middle path between mm. you know ease of understanding and not hiding the inherent technicalness of this all. So yeah. So I mean, you know, you got you got these these tabs across the top. You know, the basic setup just just for any router to set up a, a LAN. You know, the sort of IP ranges. Um, oh, uh, something that, that that might interest you uh, here. I've got you see these DNS numbers. They're not the DNS servers provided by my by my internet mm, service. I recognise those. Well, this is Open DNS, which again yeah. is another sort of weapon in the battle of of, of sanitising your internet connection. Yeah. So you know. So, so you. I mean, um, I see on this. You're showing me the um, your router interface. There is that your. Is that also your um, modem? No, no. The w that one. The way the way because I've got ADSL, so yeah, um, pretty much all the DDWRT routers. Well, all the ones I've bought, there must be some that have a, an ADSL interface on them, but all the ones, maybe the half dozen that I've bought for sort of family use and for other people, um, they've all been uh, Ethernet, Ethernet. So they, they, they yes. assume there's a cable modem or an ADSL yeah. modem hanging off them. Because um, this is, because uh, I too use OpenDNS, so I've got it working on my modem router yes. to which my DDWRT router is connected to, but but I was uh, interested to notice um, that uh, I don't need the Open DNS um, DNS 
uh, IP addresses in on the WDW yes uh, WRT because yes. it actually well I mean I'm, I was wondering whether I'd have to put anything in at all you know to point it in that direction but it's um, you, you're, you're out of the, the router that's closer to the internet is is answering all your network's DNS inquiries yeah, yeah. so in a sense your DDWRT router which is your inner router that's that's um, that doesn't even know you know you, you know that it's mm. having to that it's going via open DNS in fact no. if I if I just drop down my my wireless um, you won't see this Tim but 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 uh, okay. the screen recording I'm making I've just dropped down my wireless uh, settings and I've actually got two uh, you can see my two routers Thorpe Dell 4 and Thorpe Dell 5 um, Thorpe Dell 4 is the DDWRT router Thorpe Dell 5 is the ISP provided router and what I tend to do is um, all my household traffic with the exception of uh, with the exception of my Skype phone my Skype handset go via the inner router uh, uh, but if anybody comes to visit, I just give them the the, 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 the wireless details of the outer router, so so they're they're unfiltered. If they want to look at naked ladies, that's fine. If um, if they want to do that stuff, that's fine. But kind of my family go all go via the the, the DDWRT router. So you haven't got open DNS on your um, on the router provided by a broad, no. by TalkTalk. No, no, okay. that's so. It's if I, let's I'll, I'll bring up the the web interface. That's truly awful. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I've got mine arranged the other way around now, so um, I'm not using my TalkTalk Talk router at all. I'm using one that I bought. So, uh, what model of what, what model of router did you buy that you're running DDWRT on that's got a an ADSL connection on it? No, well, it, it hasn't. Though I've, I've misled you slightly asking that question because it hasn't actually got an ADSL um, modem on it. So I've, I've got um, I've got an old Netgear one that I've had you know for six, seven, or eight years. That's that's the outer router and the modem. And then I've connected my um, my Linksys um, WRT54 uh, okay. to uh, to that as the inner router. But I mean, so yeah, I mean, I could go the other way around. I thought I'd get the um, DDWRT working first, and then uh, and then tackle. I might go back to the Talk Talk newly provided router, which I'd, I got out of the box, plugged in, had a go with for a while, and then put away again. <laughs> <laughs> because actually, I measured the uh, the uh, I measured the speed, so I was getting on it because that, that was the the tenet of their original um, email or message to me. You know, um, we it's time for you to, if you'd have a, a router upgrade because you can get better speeds. Yeah. And I thought, oh, well, if they're offering it for free, I'll give it a go. Um, so I tried it out, and the speed was almost identical. Not, 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 not worth um, making an improvement for. No. So um, uh, home, home, home network configurations aside, um, you know, just kind of flipping through all the, the tabs on the basic setup screen, um, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of things that, that probably nobody needs to touch, like MAC address cloning. That, because originally broadband providers would would only let you onto their network if they saw the MAC address of the router they provided. So if you were trying to use another router, they they'd kind of show you the door. And and uh, and so this you know there's a setting here that allows you to clone a MAC address from a from a, an existing um, router. Nice. Um, mm. You know you've got a sort of routing tables. So if if you're using two DDWRT routers between premises, for example. You can set up static routes so that you, you know the, the printer in accounts is always accessible to the people in the sort of remote office and that kind of stuff. So they, yeah, they, they really are kind of looking at that, you know, sort of wider sort of issue. Um, uh, VLANs, uh, yeah, which you normally associate with kind of expensive Cisco, you know, kind of six thousand pound boxes. Um, uh, you know that you can you can run uh, four VLANs. And some of them can be wireless as well. You have separate wireless VLANs, so you're sort of very useful if you want to give, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're a little business and you wanted to give the customers uh, a, a little wireless VLAN that they could use themselves without touching your network, without risking their viruses getting onto your network. You can do all that nonsense. And, um, uh, uh, you know, bridging networks and, and all the kind of stuff that, that, that is, again, more common in sort of high-end, uh, you know, metal chassis kind of rack mounted mm. routers rather than plastic boxes that sit in cupboards under stairs. Um, but the, uh, the, the the thing where I think this excels is, is there's a tab here called access restrictions. And uh, uh, because it's the holidays, I've turned off homework website restrictions. Yeah. <laughs> but typically... <laughs> party begins. Yeah, yeah. Typically, uh, yeah, yeah, during the school week, uh, 
between uh, 10 to 5 in the evening so that so, so basically James our youngest gets a uh, he gets an hour when he gets home from school where he can uh, knock himself out and you know watch YouTube or whatever but between uh, 10 to 5 and 8 o'clock in the evening on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so school nights um, uh, he's restricted in what he can do and if I, if I look at edit list of clients there's there's probably only three machines in there which yes his 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 iPod his laptop and his desktop you know, um, they're, they're the things that, that, that are affected by this rule. So, so nobody else is, is, is affected. And all I do is I do some website blocking by keywords. So they're the keywords that we that we mm. stop, you know all the time time wasting websites. You know, so obviously yeah. maybe he wants to look at at, uh, at Wikipedia or other things for his homework, which is fine. But but he can't get to those kind of things. Um, and uh, I also block the Minecraft uh, IP ports. Uh, so mm -hmm. he can't play Minecraft during that period, and uh, and, and ever send messenger, um, that that's locked locked out. But again, just for those hours, for those days, and I don't have to do anything more about that. And we've kind of come to an agreement now that he, he knows that, you know, this is the way it is, and, uh, and so he does his homework during that time. I think it works quite well. Um, yeah. There's all, yeah, we also sort of have sort of bedtime um, uh, rules, uh, you know, where for those nights before school, you, you know, uh, the, the, yeah, he just loses his internet connection. Um, much to his chagrin, um, but uh, you know you can see you sort of got up to a sort of ten kind of rules in there um, mm. as, as to what you can filter and what you can trap. What, 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 what sort of things have been the challenge on your network? Have you have um, you, have you del well, delved into access restrictions yet? Only um, only just experimenting for myself really. So um, so uh, I just uh, got to the point where I can. Um, get to the stage where I can make sure my um, my DDWRT router is actually um, spreading some Wi-Fi, you know, it's all accessible and it works freely. And then I'm going to, um, I've just changed, swapped around my um, SSIDs so that the um, the new, the inner router assumes the um, personality of the, the, uh, the outer previously, um, what was the only router. So, um, so I'm sort of making it transparent, although it will need the um, the passwords putting in one more time um, to people's devices. But I'm I'm making it transparent in terms of uh, keeping the SSID the same and swapping over the functions of my two routers now. So um, so the the inner router is the one that um, is going to have the restrictions on, and it'll be that sort of thing, similar thing to what you got. So making sure that um, bedtimes. Um, uh, adhered to in terms of access and um, and homework times as well, if that's appropriate as well. And uh, um, it's it's pretty early days, really. So I thought I'd ease it in gently and um, and see how it goes. But so far, my experiments have worked. Um, you know, I've got the. Um, it took a bit of doing. Um, just me finding my own path through. Um, so um, I've got the mode working now that um, enables me to, to do the access restrictions. And, uh, you know, I think one of those key things is just, um, uh, for me, uh, learning um, of getting the, um, the priorities and the order right in terms of which router um, uh, gives data to which other router. And um, uh, having the, um, it took me a while just to get the, uh, the DDWRT set up so that it was, um, uh, First of all, I started it in um, with the uh, DHCP disabled, and um, and and it took me uh, quite a while to realise that that's that's not the way to do it. Well, then of course you have to hard set the IP addresses for everything, and that's a real pain for when you take your yeah. your iPad to Auntie Gladys's house and you use her Wi-Fi. So oh, all of a yeah. sudden the hard, yeah. hard set IP address is no good anymore. But so, mm. so, yeah, that, that, yeah, I was going to say that it's the first thing uh, yeah. you need to have a little think about. You know, obviously the DHCP mm. server, which is in services. Services menu, um, you know. I tend to, I tend to, I tend to leave everything set to DHCP. You know, in terms of smartphones and, and laptops and such, and even even desktops, I leave them set to DHCP. But in here, I put in a, uh, I put in a, uh, a little setting so that, um, you know, there, there's my MacBook Pro. It always gets assigned that IP address, and there's there's James's laptop. It always gets assigned that IP address, uh, and there are the two the two desktop computers always get assigned those, and and, and that means that. That you, you know, when you start making access uh, restriction rules, you, know, you, you can be certain that you're talking to the right IP address, because if if you're relying entirely on DHCP and you don't know, with any degree of certainty, what IP address has been doled out to, 
uh, yeah. you know, little little Timmy's iPad, then um, mm. yeah, how do you how, how how can you make an access rule, you know, for that? I see you've um, I'm just looking curiously at the domain, the IP domains that you've got there going on. So so I've just um, took mine um, one nine two one six eight dot one instead of dot zero um, for my inner DDWRT router. But yeah. I see you're on. Ten hundreds. Yeah, this this goes back to the late nineties. Um, uh -huh. uh, so, one nine two one six eight dot x dot y are obviously uh, they're they're reserved IP addresses for for private networks, aren't they? Uh, and and so is ten dot one hundred dot whatever dot whatever. They're reserved um, IP spaces for for private networks. And um, I don't know, just just fifteen years ago when I first started building a little network at home. I just use those rather than one nine two one six eight. It was no no mm. conscious decision. It was just yeah. Um, I think the ISDN router that I had at the time came with those as default. All right, ISDN. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Being an outside broadcast engineer, you probably by. still use ISDN quite a lot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I've, no, I might have passed that one by. <laughs> well, but, but, you, or it passed me by. We use ISDN an awful lot on Arsenal still for for sending live audio feeds around. Yeah, 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 I've seen that. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, what else is worth mentioning about DDWRT? So, do, obviously, do you want to have a pause for a minute? Can I just? Um, yeah. We just have a. I just want to. Hi. Hey there. You're right. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. So I just had a something to get going. Put in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> How jolly nice. Oh uh, yeah. I, I, so you can't see it on your screen. I've just I just popped up, and I'll link to in the show notes um, a little presentation I do at, at, occasionally do at community centres and church halls and stuff about staying safe on the internet. And I do kind of touch on these sort of alternate firmwares a bit, bit but I mean, obviously for non-technical people, this is kind of a bit a bit out there. But there's there's lots of other things you can do to kind of you know keep your network safe. Open DNS being one of them. Um, and uh, so, uh, so yeah, I'm just scrolling through that at the moment, and uh, I'll, I'll mm. link to those notes um, in the show notes. Quit. Open Office always a bit sluggish. <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah. um, uh, of course, the other thing that, that DDWRT is 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 it's a NAT router. It's a network address translation router, um, which means that it, it it takes that 192.168 range in your case, 10.100. whatever range in my case, and attaches that little little you know, 254 possible IP addresses through a single IP address out to the rest of the internet. Now, of course, you might you might be running things inside that network which require access from outside. Servers or things that are a bit like servers. So Xbox gaming is typically one thing that people have to deal with. Now, Microsoft came up with this thing called UPnP maybe 10 years ago, whereby an application inside a network can <clears throat> ask a router to open up ports for it. But this is a disaster from a security point of view because it means that you know anything uh, like a bit of malware running on your network could then with impunity open up ports on your router and invite the bad guys in kind of thing, which is why for UPnP mm. I always leave it disabled uh, uh, you know, mm. on, my, on my routers. Uh, and, I, and I tend to instead rely on port forwarding. So in the case of the two ports you have to open up for Xbox, for 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 land get for for when gaming you know for 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 playing you know whatever you're playing with people across the internet you know you have to open up those two ports and again you have to know what the IP address is of the internal device and and so that's another reason why setting the HCP table is important. Um, so, so you've you've um, allocated those IP addresses for the Xbox. Yeah, that's right. I know that Xbox is always dot two on my network. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Skype, um, you know, that's that trick of of port forwarding for Skype to make sure that you never go via a, a, a super node, so that your Skype quality is always maintained. That's another thing that's worth doing. I run a little web server on my NAS. You know, there's a kind of remote desktop to get to the desktop machine. Blah blah blah. You know, my, for a while we were running a Minecraft server. Um, mm -hmm. so, so we're not now. Um, and uh, uh, Raspberry Pi remote desktop. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, right. so, so I, I tend to rely on port forwarding rather than letting mm -hmm. uh, UPnP do its thing. Um, so that's again, it's another another really easily done thing on the DDWRT. Mm. Just thinking, what else is worth making note of? Um, uh, 
you really can monkey around forever with these things. Yeah, I saw there's there's a lot um, a lot to look at, isn't there? And you get a lot. I think you get a lot of stats about what's going on in your network. So, so, yeah. so you. So I mean, currently 190, 194 active IP connections from my network going out. <laughs> That's extraordinary. It is, isn't it? it? Well, I mean, you know that you know computers tend to. I mean, there's probably ten IP connections being held up for this Skype conversation. Um, yeah. But but uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing, and, and so you can see a lot, a mm. lot of what's going on. And they really are very modest little computers, little 200 megahertz mm. Broadcom uh, yeah. computer. Well, I love the way that um, you know you can go to that. Um, is it the status screen there, and it'll just show. It gives you um, a summary of all the um, all your MAC addresses that the um, the DDWRT router is using, for example, and stuff like that. I yeah. mean, those sort of things are really hard to get hold of from from shopboard or or, or or routers provided by ISPs. Yeah. You know, that sort of information it, it, you have to spend a while fishing around for. Whereas, just because this is all open. Um, open software, then all that sort of information is freely available for yourself, which is helpful just in terms of administrating it. This is, this is the frightening thing here. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the, uh, the status uh, WAN tab, and uh, it shows you how much ingoing and outgoing bandwidth you've used. So uh, wow. look, at, look at this there. There yeah. are days where, yeah. I'm, where I'm burning up kind is of fit more than 15 gigabytes of data in a day. Whoa. Yeah, so, Whoa, yeah. so what, what, what day was that? That should tell me if I hover over it. 21st of December. You can tell the days I was yeah. away. <laughs> that were way visiting relatives, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, then it starts peaking up again. So we, we got back last yeah. night and there we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight in there. Yeah. Now my, my father in law. gigabytes. He, yeah, he has a capped connection of 10 gigabytes a month. You know, uh, I, I, I burn up that most days, you know. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, well, I mean, um, fair play to Talk Talk because they've, they're, um, you know, they're they're quite generous really with um, with what they allow in you know in terms of fair usage. Because um, I, I think didn't they this year they changed it so they actually announced it was um, officially uncapped um, or so they've opened it up a bit, haven't they? Which I think is um, you know appreciative of, of where people are at really yeah I, especially if you've got the situation i mean um i'll be following in your way but when you get pe uh you know youngsters who are who you know might i've noticed um just during this year how my own children um have watched less and less tv on the tv and and you know when, when they have a screen of their own then they're they're quite content um just fishing around for stuff on youtube and other other sites, you know, and, and yeah. that is going that way. I, I tell people, my kids don't watch TV, and they really don't. Occasionally, they might watch a DVD or a Blu-ray, but um, uh, and I think more and more, I don't watch TV, not, or not not off the air, you know, yeah. came in through uh, the antenna, yeah. DVB type TV. I watch an awful lot of yeah. iPlayer, um, mm. you know, and there's, and there's kind of everything on iPlayer seems to be HD now, you know, mm. you're burning up you know, 1.5 or 2.5 megabits per second just to watch an HD feed. Um, mm. And in fact, I used to be with Virgin Media, and Virgin Media, I think I was on the... So, so Virgin Media bought out, talk, uh, bought out Blue Yonder, who before that were some other cable company, who I joined back in 2000. And, and every mm. time they upped their, their, their connection speed, I would, I'd buy the next one. So I'd go from 2 to 4 to 10 to 20 megabits per second. And then when 50 megabits per second came out, it was like appreciably more. It was like £15 a month more. And I thought, well, you know, 20 megabits is just fine, you know. Um, I'm not going to bother upgrading. But when they when they brought in the 50 megabit connection, they changed their terms and conditions to something like mm. if you use more than 3.5 gigabytes in a day, they'd cap you down to a very slow speed. Mm. And I worked it out, and 3.5 gigabytes is actually using your 20 megabit per second yeah. connection for less than three hours. So if you mm -hmm. used if you used your your 20 megabit per second at more than 10 percent of what it was capable for for three hours which in a typical evening is just a couple of people watching the iPlayer and a couple of people making it doesn't calls. take long they capture yeah. you know and mm. um, when I went to them and I, I said hey, come on I never signed up for this their response was ah but if you go for the 50 megabit connection that's uncapped and it struck yeah. me that it was yeah. just an upsell it was just to get you to buy yeah. it you know so yeah it's just a marketing strategy isn't it in fact <laughs> on my blog I, I wrote long and long and bitterly about Virgin Media mm. and, and all my nonsense with yeah. it yeah so. I remember seeing <laughs> seeing their, their name get mentioned quite a lot, quite a lot, quite often. So, um, so anyway, back to DDWRT. So, so, any more thoughts on that, Tim? What, what, uh, what, uh, 
what, what, what are you going to be your next experiments? What are, what, what's your, what are you next aiming for? Is, is, it, is it principally the filtering? Is it, or is it, is it principally more control and, and, and more stats over the network? Or? Yeah, so um, I think I'll, I'll look um, a bit, a bit, put a few more details in, in terms of filtering um, and access controls. Um, you know, it's, I think probably it won't take too long to get um, set to the sort of to get the right kind of balance of, of where it needs to be in terms of leaving um, enough accessible, but also uh, making sure that it's just that having that feeling that um, that at least we know what the baseline is here at home, you know. So I think that's the important thing, is having a, a baseline that that we are content with um, on behalf of our youngsters. And, um, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be delving into... Um, I don't, port forwarding probably isn't um, essential just yet, but I'll be looking at what services are, are worthwhile incorporating with that. And then... Um, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg, really, isn't it? There's, there's a whole, I've seen there's a whole load of um, user um, guides for DDWRT in the wiki there. Um, so I might, uh, I'm not particularly, um, uh, I'm not the sort of person that will spend, you know, weeks f um, fiddling with, with stuff, but it'd be interesting to read through, um, making make sure I can get um, decent uh, speeds and quality of service, or at least it's, I'm sure it's already set with a, with a default that will do that for me, but well, I'll, I'll, I'll read through and just see what's what. You mentioned quality of service, and, and, and mm. you can define quality of service in several ways. The, the, the thing I think is really good is, is, is that the, the hardwired Ethernet ports, you can give them priorities so you can say those two hardwired ethernet ports they get no more than 512 kilobits per second so if you've got like a real bandwidth hog of a child who's bit torrent and stuff the whole time you can shut down the port going to their desktop computer but you can also do it based on protocols and and so you know bit torrent i tend to knock right down to being the slow it, it gets no priority um but um i've defined in this service here um skype typically skype and iplayer they get top priority, so 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 mm -hmm. nothing can slow down Skype or iPlayer. Um, yeah. So yeah, quality of service is a fantastic thing to be able to play with, and, and it's the kind of thing you don't get in 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 beige no. plastic routers that come no, from your ISP. They, no, no, they don't want to give you that that amount of control. I was just looking at the um, the ports you had at the bottom of that screen, the Ethernet ports. Yeah. Um. What, how are you defining those, so or how are they defined? They, they are or? physical ports on the back of the router. Oh, okay, fine, right. And, okay, and so yeah. The, these oh, yeah. So that gives you very, yeah. very definite, precise control then. Absolutely, and and and, and so that those are their their packet shaping uh, um, uh, templates, which you can get to somewhere else. Um, but you can also just say a flat a flat rate. You know, mm -hmm. no more than that much going through that port. Yeah. Yeah, it's all worth looking at, really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's worth some of these things you can sort of glance over and think, you know, that that's not an issue. But there are certain things like that where you, where you know you can have quite precise control, and it's going to be quite useful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big fan of this system. I know that there are others. Uh, yeah, obviously we mentioned we talked about Tomato earlier. Um, yeah. But there are there are other um, uh, open source bandwidths. In fact, I think on the Tomato page they even big them up. Here we are. <laughs> don't like it no problem it's nice to have some stuff to choose from so they yeah, mentioned yeah. free WRT hyper WRT open WRT Tarif and I've, I've really only played with tomato and DDWRT um, mm. so uh, you know if you've got one of these little things and hey you know the fact that you can pick them up on eBay for almost no money you know five pounds so I was looking um, just as a little addendum I was curious um, reading the wiki about it and, and um, how um, how DDWRT came about and it was it was for historical reasons, wasn't it? Because um, was it Linksys? Um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I've not heard um, this story, no. No, it was something to do with... Um, it was just a brief paragraph I read where... I don't know if it was Linksys or a particular manufacturer wanted to employ a particular kernel of software or something that happened to be open source and therefore, that, according to the rules, they had to release the whole of their um, operating system... Um, as an open source uh, 
make it freely available yeah. for people to inspect or something like that. And then, and then I think that's how it all started. Was they um, from that you know people got wind of that and then um, were able to develop it and tweak it to what we have today. But I think that was the the, the genesis of the uh, how the system came about. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because Linux, being yeah, a, it does. You know, network operating system from the get go. You know, IP yeah. chains and all those things are, are built right in. So it makes sense to, to base, base it on that. Um, yeah. That's, this, this little Cisco E1000, that was one of the ones I bought for the kids who went away to university. It worked really well. You know? I have a, yeah, I've got one of those, actually. Um, but they, they don't get... Um, I wasn't quite sure. I, read, I did actually read up a little bit on it, and it looked like there was quite a few cases of those getting bricked when they were... Um, really? Yeah. So... Um, because I have actually got one of those at home as well, but I haven't um, haven't tried uh, flashing it myself. Right. Yeah. So the ones I've done are are the Buffalo, which I think I saw an instance of down here somewhere. Where was that? It's worth mentioning, that, I think, as well, um, just through reading through um, that um, it's worth checking what what version of chipset you have when you're buying your yes your ebay router um i i mean i didn't check very carefully and the one i bought um works fine for what i want to do but it you know if you want to delve into it deeply um sometimes it pays to get um an earlier version of firmware or software chips whatever it is hardware chips um so but that's worth mentioning to people if they're uh if they're shopping around and seeing, I mean, I, as I say, I wasn't particularly careful when I checked, and um, uh, the eBay one I bought didn't. Um, I don't think it's specified in the advert, but I noticed having a look again last night, retrospectively, that that most of them do mention which version chipset they have in them. Yes, and some of them obviously only come with two megs of memory, which I think limits you yeah. as to what you can do. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's, all, it's all going on in the Taylor house. <laughs> Mikey, Mikey's well, all still asleep. I'll go and investigate. <laughs> and it's nearly 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay, listen, Tim, thanks yeah. a lot for that. Um, hey, pleasure, that's, Phil. That's really good, and, and it makes great yeah. material for a podcast. So uh, I will see you in the new year, dude, and um, you take it easy.